Welcome to IFL Securities YouTube channel. Today we have the management of Rarian Cash Management, which is coming up with its IPO. Uh, I welcome Colonel David and Mr. Muthuraman from uh, Rarian Cash Management. Uh, Colonel David is the chairman and managing director of the company, and Mr. Muthuraman is the director of strategy for the company. Uh, we can start with uh, Colonel David. Uh, so please. Tell a little bit about your company's foundation and uh, you know what business you are in and why you have come for the IPO. Uh, well, firstly, Saro, thank you for in inviting us uh, today. You're welcome, sir. And it's a benchmark moment for our company at this point when you're on the verge of going public. But it didn't definitely look like that in 2005 when after 25 years of service in the army, I decided to try my hand at entrepreneurship and uh, set up the Radian Cash Management Services uh, Limited with a focus on retail cash management. Retail cash management is a flourishing business in the developed economies. But at that point in India, there were hardly one or two players who were providing the service. So I felt that it was a good area to get into and focus and develop. And I'm happy to say that at this point, we are the market leaders in retail cash management. But it didn't look like that those days. I mean, we had to work very hard. And by about 2010, we had a Pan-India footprint and a turnover of about 50 crores. There's a time when I signed up for the owner president management program in Harvard Business School to have better understanding of global best practices. And also to see as to how we could um, you know grow the company further and that's when i realized that uh, we needed uh, outside capital and so in january 2015 we signed on uh, ascent capital ascent capital is a company based in uh, bangalore right and we signed them on uh, and uh, they came in and took a percentage of the company the promoter was Mr. Rajakumar. He had earlier been a senior person in SEBI. And he promised me that he'd help us take the company public. And that's how we are at this juncture today. In IPO, we are given the price band, 94 to 99 rupees. Right. And the, the IPO dates are 23rd, 26th, and 27th. So we are at the, at the end of an important part of a journey as of now. So it's about 17 years uh, since the beginning, right? That's 17 and a half years. Yes, yes. right. It's your baby, so you remember it precisely. Yeah. So how are you going to use the proceeds, sir? Uh, Muthu, would you like to cover that? Sure. Uh, the issue size is about uh, 388 crores at the highest end of the price band, uh -huh. uh, of which uh, 60 crores is primary issue, and the rest of it is OFS. The 60 crore primary issue has three components. First company is about 25 crores. We are looking to hire about uh, 220, uh, uh, we're looking to buy about 220 vans in our books. Hitherto, we are all operating on a lease basis. Uh, we just want to have about 20% uh, of our overall fleet on our own books as a risk mitigation strategy to ensure that we are not dependent on external vendors or for uh, entire uh, uh, scale of our operations. So, about 25 crores is towards. 25 crores is uh, towards the uh, primary uh, issue uh, of uh, van purchase. About 20 crores is uh, working capital. Uh, see, we handle over 500 crores of cash every day. That yes. goes up to even 1,000 crores on a uh, uh, Monday after a long weekend. And uh, there could be some link failures. We need to do RTGS. So some amount of our own working capital is required to manage such large scale of operations. So about 20 crores is towards working capital. There are a couple of other things also. We offer premium services like cash delivery, where we have to use our own funds, etc. So 20 crores is towards working capital, and the rest is towards uh, general corporate purposes. There is no significant debt, is it? Company is a zero debt, uh, net zero net debt company. We have been uh, we have paid over 53 crores in dividend over the last three years. Consistently, cash flow from operations is uh, positive after meeting working capital changes for each of the last three years and the first quarter as well. And there's a story behind that. Why we are, you know, in the current uh, financial condition. Right. And the story is that uh, nearly 22% of our workforce is uh, 
ex army ex armed forces oh, 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 oh. so you know they come with their you know it was like this that i was ex army so i had a, a national affiliation towards them sure and in addition to that we were handling public money it was a zero era business yeah so it seemed like an ideal fit yeah and uh, the ex service fraternity comes with certain important characteristics like integrity hard work discipline dedication yeah but the aspect why we don't have any debt is because of our frugality we drive our business in a very frugal manner right and uh, that's the reason why we had the best roe and roc numbers in the industry Uh, Mr. Butraman, could you uh, give the numbers ROC and ROC? Yes. Uh, see, first quarter of uh, uh, this year, FY23, yeah. uh, audited uh, revenues were 84 crores mm. and a PAT of 15.3 crores. That gives uh, and uh, <coughs> our EBITDA margins were 25.8 percent for the first quarter, probably the highest in the industry, and PAT margins of over 18 percent. and for fi22 our roc was 33% and roe was 27% highest in the industry yeah. and please note first quarter is a lean season for us okay so yeah. uh, you can uh, estimate from there yeah. which is the best quarter for you usually october november december because of the festive season right most of our end users yeah. are from say 25% of our re revenue hmm. end user revenue come from e-commerce and e-commerce logistics Okay. 30% okay. is from BFSI. Hmm. 20% is from organized retail. Hmm. For each of them, October, November, December is the best quarter for them. So, uh, in all these segments, which segment do you see growing faster, or you you will bet more on the segment? In the past uh, uh, few years, as in we have seen uh, the maximum growth uh, coming from the uh, e-commerce and e-commerce logistics segment. Okay. Every e-commerce player, uh, Amazon, Flipkart, Nike, uh, all of them, as well as e-commerce logistics like uh, Delivery, Express Bees, Ecom Express, Shadow Wax, all of them are our end customers. And as you said that uh, you are a market leader in uh, retail cash management, um, what kind of share would you have? I know it's very fragmented; you may not have exact number, but any guesstimate? No, uh, we have an approximate number, and uh, I think it would be closer to forty percent market share. Okay. And this is from the Frost and Sullivan report. Okay. 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 Yeah. So the industry is very consolidated. There is no fragmented, as in, as is the case anywhere in the world. Top right. two players account for a significant share of the market because of the nature of the industry. It is like a natural oligopoly. Once one player invests in the root infrastructure, second player right. invests in the root infrastructure. There is limited economics and scope for the third player to come in. Oh. So it's a natural oligopoly business. Right. So we are the market leader with forty percent share. Probably uh, top uh, Frost and Sullivan estimates that the top three players account for about seventy-five to eighty percent of the market. And what kind of market size uh, that that is available for? About see, uh, yeah. Again, Frost and Sullivan has estimated the, the market size for FI twenty-three to be about nine hundred and fifty crores. Okay. Um, and so you said that you're a frugal business, but I'm also you're employing so many people. Uh, so with the expansion, with the IPO money, would you be hiring more people? Yes, uh, we we do hire a lot of people. In fact, we average about two to three per, people almost every day. Right. Okay. That's the level of growth that is happening. Right. Okay. It's also an indicator of the kind of growth that we are resisting right now. so we do look forward to you know we started the company with the motto of poverty alleviation by employment generation and i'm really happy to see that today nearly over 9000 jobs we are able to give you know and that's a crying need in the country today so that gives us immense satisfaction so oh, 9000 are on your rolls or it's like uh, uh, 2000 people are on our rolls about yeah. 7000 are on contract as cash executives but uh, working in sales okay that's wonderful and uh, would you be able to share any uh, business strategy which is like approved for you to speak uh, yeah in future yeah our growth strategies uh, what we have disclosed in our uh, drhp and rhp as well uh, yeah. are from four counts mm -hmm. uh, first count is capitalize on the growth of the end user segment mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, e-commerce e-commerce logistics nbfcs insurance these are all uh, uh, high growing and the industry as a whole is less penetrated sector 
see the uh, frost and sullivan estimates that about 30 lakh outlets are potential to use a service of this nature we are picking up from 55000 points the industry as a whole is picking up from less than 1.4 lakh points compared to 30 lakh is the potential market today which the frost and sullivan expects to go to 40 lakh in fi26 okay so compared to that, the entire industry is scattering to less than 1.4 lakh outlets, mm -hmm. giving a significant scope for continued growth over a long period of time. It's a relatively nascent industry in India, less than 20 years old, yeah. compared to the rest of the world where it is a well-established billion dollar plus business. So uh, we have a long runway for uh, growth. So capitalizing on the end user sectors like e-commerce, e-commerce logistics, uh, NBFCs, all of which are growing in tier 3, tier 4 plus locations. Okay. Please note 65% plus of our revenues come from tier 3 and tier 4 plus locations. And 85% from non-metro locations. Okay. So uh, that is strategy one. Strategy okay. two, we want to add, see, 97% of our business today comes from banks. 3% hmm. is direct customers. Customers like Decathlon, Shadowfax, Iveloop Logistics are all direct customers, where we have a direct contract. There's no bank involved. Right. We want to increase the share of the direct business, particularly right. by targeting outlets within our existing routes. So let us say we, there is a mall, Phoenix Mall in Mumbai, hmm. has 312 outlets. We Today we probably pick it up from 15, 20 outlets there. Right. Balance 300 outlets are for us to, uh, are low hanging fruits for us to tap. So adding more points within the existing routes, that will not only give us additional revenue that will but the substantial portion of the revenue will translate into bottom line because right. the cost of servicing is already absorbed in the first 15 points so that is the uh, second strategy fourth strategy is why we are buying the 220 vans we want to enhance our market share in the uh, cash van operation segment the banks hire a lot of these vans uh, armored vans with armed guards with the uh, uh, GPS, geofencing, CCTV, etc. They hire this for bulk movement of cash. Okay. That's a segment where we have a small presence. We want to increase our market share. So 220 vans that we are adding will help us enhance our uh, market share in that segment. And fourth, most important is providing uh, cross-selling or value-added services. Okay. Okay. Uh, we offer a very premium value-added service called network cash management. Say, for example, let us take a large pizza, pizza chain, comes mm. close to a bank. Mm. The, ba the bank branches and the pizza chain branches may not exactly map. There will be 60, 70% overlap, 30% will fall in locations where the bank don't have, bank don't have a presence. Right. In such instances, we collect the cash and deposit in our own account, Radiant's own co collection accounts, and then electronically transfer. This is a valued service for which we charge them extra. Okay. It's called network cash management. This segment alone accounts for 24% of our revenues. Okay. So the value added segment, uh, so we expect that the share of value added segment will increase. Hmm. That will give us uh, both revenue growth as well as better profitability.